Well, good morning. Gosh, oh gosh. <laughs> Moving slow today. I found out that my Zoom link for the coffee chat isn't working. How about that? So uh, today is day 20 and we're having some Mercury retrograde challenges. You know, I was thinking about funny thing that happened to me on the way back from my walk today. And while I was driving along, there was a green light ahead and I was getting ready to reach the intersection and the car in front of me hits the brakes and we've got a green light, clear intersection, and there's an arrow, green arrow for the, for the turning. And so I, thank God, like I wasn't tailgating or anything, but I see the guy break and stop right at the intersection. And I'm like, why is he doing this? I'm looking around. I don't see anything. Now, I didn't re react like, oh, what a dumbass, <laughs> like I would have in the past. Anyway, we turn, and I thought to myself, how interesting that we have people in our lives, and we do it ourselves, where we break when we've got a green light, when life is flowing, when things are moving on our path or when we're on the right path and need to take the step or to be assertive or to take action, we stop and we, we block ourselves or we block the flow of what the universe wants to give us or bring to us. So I thought that was a pretty interesting metaphor and I didn't get half a mile down the road when I was cruising along in my lane and all of a sudden this car changes lanes and, and stops in front of me, makes me slow down. So this person was passing a big truck, but they just slowed down. So here we are kind of going an uphill climb and this person is, is breaking or definitely going a lot slower than I was. And so I thought to myself, yeah, in the past, I would have, you know, honked the horn, flashed my lights or been really ticked off. It might've even ruined my day. But again, I was on the thought process of how are we on our path, slowing down, blocking the universe, blocking our flow. And also from my perspective, how was I responding? Was it going to help me to get mad or to get angry that this person was, you know, hanging on to their steering wheel and feared, afraid of God knows what? Maybe they were, what I could see is they weren't in their body or what were, they're not completely present. Maybe they were worried about uh, a report they got from their doctor on a health condition, or maybe there was a work issue. Whatever it is, that person wasn't really focusing on and paying attention to what they were doing. Again, all clenched up and tightened down. And so again, it, for me, it was a metaphor of how is it that we are letting our situations in life slow us down, not helping us to focus on where we need to be focusing on, where our priority is, and, um, and, and our responses to obstacles on our path. And if that is actually making our adjustments that we need to make even worse. So, yeah, I, and speaking of obstacles, Dr. Rebecca, welcome. I, I really appreciate you popping on here today and the link not working. That was a lot of fun, right? And um, what happened was Zoom, I went into the Zoom um, app and all of the meetings that I had scheduled up for all the coffee chats and for the one incredible thing at 4.30 uh, Pacific, uh, Central, 5.30 Eastern, were gone. They literally evaporated all the scheduled meetings. So all the links I sent no longer work. <laughs> and so, ah, yeah, it was a moment, right? It's like, oh God, no matter how hard we're pushing, I'm trying to make everything work. You'd think it would be simple, right? It was all gone. So, okay, we, we regroup. What am I going to do? You know, I'm not going to cry over my spilt coffee. That's for sure. That was what I did yesterday. <laughs> letting go so hey good morning Rebecca how are you today I'm well good morning uh, I took two days off for Rosh Hashanah so I have a stack of work and all sorts of things going on working on this presentation for my uh, interview I was telling you about that next level up and so um, 
yeah, but everything is is good. Um, I saw what you just posted. Day. Yeah. I saw what you just posted. Congratulations. Would you like to tell me in your words the the simplest version of all that? I mean, it's been a two month and more process that you're sort of cranking up, but what what if what are you noticing? Uh, so as I said in my post, right, I, I took a different approach this time. And instead of doing, um, I don't think that you do this necessarily, but instead of doing what they quote unquote, they tell you to do, right, get really concrete, and I'm going to go out and I'm going to make that 50 grand a month. And I actually have a funny story about that, too. So, um, you know, instead of doing that concretely sort of language and I don't know, language I'm going to go with. Well, um, and also there was also a, I don't know, you, yes, you picked a random number out of the top of your head and it sounded good. But as I, we talked about before, the belief system, you right. weren't completely caught up to that. Well, and, and then your analyzer kicks into gear. Well, how am I going to do that? That seems crazy, you know, and on and on. Yeah. So the way I'm trying to avoid all of that is, um, as I said in my post, right, I just said, well, I want to bring in whatever my one incredible thing is. And I don't know what it is, but since I don't have to know what the blocks are to clear them, I don't have to know what my one incredible thing is to manifest it either. And um, so there's a lot of things I've always wanted to do. You know, I've always wanted to move like, so for example, this is my father-in-law's house. There's nothing wrong with the house. It's not my house. And I would like to have my own house and your own space. Right. And my own space and all of these things. I, again, not that there's anything wrong and not that I feel right. any issues. I just want my own stuff. So then, um, you know, there's all this career strife that I've had. I've had a lot of career success, as we pointed out, but I've also had a lot of career strife, some of which, you know, we've talked about here, right? We're dealing with the difficult people and, you know, all of these, all of these things. So, um, Yesterday, I went to the store to buy the ingredients for the homemade pizza dough that my son and I were going to make, which we've never done before. But the holla came out great. I don't know if you saw my holla. Yes, pictures. I did. My holla yeah. pictures were like amazing. Yeah. So we were like, okay, we're going to try this pizza dough. So, um, so I'm at the store and, you know, my phone gives me my email notifications and it gives me the notification that I'm invited now to go on campus at my alma mater to do these, this presentation and have an interview and do like a full day tour and like everything. And I'm like, oh, I'm like, formality, you know, here we go, you know, formality, here we go. We come back with the offer letter, you know, I, it's next month. And I'm like, wow, like, this is like crazy because I'm so used to having those blocks. Like it's, it, it's not crazy, but it feels crazy, right? Cause I'm so used to these old things. And I'm always telling you about the rewiring. So, the original plan was that my father-in-law said that, you know, he's going to move with us. So he's like, well, I'll sell the house and then I'll give you a bunch of money from that to do a down payment on this other house that my husband loves, which has an opportunity for him to like grow things and play with the dirt and stuff like that, you know? So I'm like, okay. So I call the listing agent for the house that my husband loves. And I would never buy anything sight unseen anyway, but I call the, the listing agent and I say, you know, I'm going to be coming out to this area for this interview on this date anyway. I'm coming in the day before, I'm leaving the day after. I'd like to see, you know, these houses while I'm out there. So I'll start all of that. And then I said to her, because I'd called my bank and, you know, many of us have issues with our student loans and buying houses. And um, so I had called my bank and my bank was like, oh, your student loan balance. And it's not even the payment, it's the balance. And I was like, okay, I was like, this is all nonsense. So I said to the listing agent, when I spoke to her, I said, do you have any local lenders that you work with that I can speak to about this? Because these other people are like, I've banked with them for years, but they're not listening to me. And I, I really don't like it when people don't show up for me. Like it really, it's, it's a thing for me. Part of my whole, like I always tell people, right? I have enough Ooh. trust issues to open my own journal. I trust everybody. It's just a question of what do I trust them to do? And I didn't like it. So she connects me with these people and this is on, um, oh God, I emailed the guy, I think on a Sunday. So I think this was like all on a Saturday. Anyway, so I emailed the guy because I figure I might as well send the email. 
he can pick it up on Monday. And I even told him that I said, I don't expect any response today. I just wanted to do this, you know, before I get into the busyness of all these other things. So um, I filled out all of the stuff yesterday for his mortgage broker. And, you know, and I marked, like, I tried to put little notes in there because, you know, you try to fill out these forms and I don't really fit nicely into any of these boxes because, you know, I don't have 20% to put down and all of this. So I'm like trying to fill out this form. And then, uh, and then I ran into a couple questions. So I called her and didn't reach her, which is fine. I left her voicemail. So she calls me this morning, about an hour ago, maybe two, about, about an hour and a half ago. Cause I had a, it was right before my 10 o'clock that I had. So about an hour and a half ago, she calls me and she says, do you want to move before that house sells? And I was like, well, yeah. And she goes, okay. She goes, do you have any down payment funds like at all? And I said, well, no, because I wasn't planning on this. And she says, oh, I think I can get you a loan with 100% financing. I'll call you this afternoon. Hallelujah. And I was Thank like, you, okay. God. <laughs> You know, the, the Arabs, my, my Arab friends and Egypt, fr Egypt friends, they say, Alhamdulillah, thank you, God. Thank you, God. That's fantastic. And I was like, okay. And yeah, so I, Alhamdulillah. And I, called, and I called my friend last night because, you know, I get, I get like, they call it analysis paralysis, but it's not really that bad for me. Yeah, yeah, like, no, I, it is, Rebecca, it is. I'm sorry, I'm speaking the truth. <laughs> you're highly analytical which is like we said before a double-edged sword right and so so I tend to like you know I overthink everything so, I hope you're amused with me you know picking on no, you here I, 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 you know. and so um so it was like so funny so I call my friend last night and I go all right now I have to put together this presentation on how I forget how she worded it but basically on my most interesting research topic and it's like an hour long and I'm like reading all these things and you know we also as academics we like tend to play mind games with each other so then it's yeah. like a whole new layer of, of things but anyway so I call my classmate who did most of my peer review when we were students and I said do you think I can just like somehow modify something I've already done like maybe take my defense and and do something that builds on that and he goes, remind me again what your defense was, because it's like been two years and nobody remembers what any oh, of it. Oh, yeah, I know. It was really I, I can't remember what I did last week. Never <laughs> mind. <laughs> like, really funny. So we're having this conversation. And he goes, yeah, I think you could do that. And I was like, okay. So I started working on it last night to go, okay, I think I can maybe do it this way. So I just saved it as the, like, the original, but I'm, like, trying to take things out, change it around so that... I already have like a bunch of the content and I can just move it around or repurpose it. Absolutely. And Good job. Go from there. And that yeah, way it's already familiar. We don't have to reinvent the wheel, wheel, right? When right, right. Because I hate that. You know how much I hate that. I mean, I do overanalyze, but I hate to reinvent the wheel again. Like, I feel like, no, we have one thing. That's right. And I also try not, I'm trying not to make it too complicated for myself because, right. you know, I, I do, right. You get into this, like, I don't think the paralysis piece is where I get tripped up. Where I get tripped up is I start overanalyzing it and then I start doing things, but I start doing things that are like way harder and more complicated than they need to do. Uh, you know what? Welcome to the club. I do right. the same right. thing. I know they call it analysis paralysis, but that's not. I, exactly I, call, right it, I call it overwhelm. I call it overwhelm. And it's almost like you've got too many ideas and you're not grounded. So, well, when and we I also start to feel this like, like, because it's a new process to me, if I had a lot of experience talking to search committees and all of this, I don't think it would have hit me quite the same way based on how I have done in other things. Um, right. But because this is all a new process to me, it's like my, it, it, yeah, overwhelm is a better descriptor. It's like my brain just kind of goes. Eh. Scramble. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like my zoom know. go poof. <laughs> it's almost like all the information is there, but you can't access it or you go, it's somebody scrambled all the files and you're trying to sort out. And so, <laughs> so I sent my friend an email last night and I was like, I was like, okay, I'm like, how do I do this? And he goes, just pull something out of your research history so that it's familiar. And I'm like, oh, okay. And I'm like, hey, do you think I could do this? 
And I'm like, I'm trying not to overthink this, but you know, so he calls me and he goes, he goes, stop. He's like, stop. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, thank you. And he goes, yes, just, just modified. He goes, what if you do it this way? And I was like, oh, I kind of like that. So I started to kind of put it that way last night. And then uh, I'm hopefully going to finish that uh, later today so I can look at it and see what I think. Okay. Can I, can I give you a suggestion? Of course. With that project, give it a grounding cord. Okay. It's almost like you put it in a, an imaginary file folder or a bubble, whatever comes to mind, and you can release the energetic charge on it. Okay. I, I get crazy with taxes every year and all the, the energy around the receipts and all the activities we did in the whole year. So uh, that's what I do. And, and whatever you're working on, give it its own little file folder or bubble in your mind and ground the energetic charge off it because you're overwhelmed with the excitement, the possibilities, your, your spirits going into the future, trying to imagine pot potentials or possibilities, how you should work it, structure it to make yeah, it all happen. Really Right, right. I had this whole thing, you know, and right. I, and I kind of, you know, and so it was so funny. So he says to me, he goes, stop. That's right. You And the mind, the analyzer, what we can do is ground our analyzer. It's that point in the center of our head, just ground that point. And so that will help you go, whoop, it, it's like a re, re, reboot, right. a reset. And then it got much better, right? When he said that, then it got better because because I was like, I don't know, I could do this. I but Rebecca, I'm sorry to say it, sweetie, but you're relying on outside people to do that for you. And so right. I'm just suggesting these are tools and ways that you can catch yourself and go, all right, remember the last time I did that and here's what I can do. It's a new practice. Right. And I appreciate it because I need to do that. Right. It, it's it, something that we have to start employing because I don't know, but the world just seems to be getting crazier and our lives are getting more full and we get these moments of overwhelm. It's not that you're not successful or competent. It's just that pattern of you yeah. get yourself in a frenzy and how can you get out of the spin? Yep. And when we rely on other people, there, there, there's times where they're not available. Right. No, I totally agree. So it, I'm sorry to, I just wanted to catch that moment, right? You, you know, no, another okay. way that you can catch yourself doing it and apply that. I think you'll find it very helpful. I think that's good. Did I derail you? Fair insight. Yes. I was going to tell you something else and I can't remember what it was, but anyway, See? it'll come back to me if it was important. Okay. Yeah. So that's so fantastic. So you've got the house potential with a new house, with a mortgage financing, with zero down, and you've got this new job. That, that Was this the one that, this is the third? This, inter this is the one we've been talking about. This is the second interview, but it's an in-person interview. Um, and uh, this is the one I spoke to the search committee and they basically gave me a standing ovation afterwards. It was very funny. Fantastic. Um, it's the same one. And so now they want me to come on campus. I, so I have an interview with different people. They haven't sent me the agenda yet. And then, um, so that's going to be an all day. I'm going to get a campus. What, tour is it out of state, campus. out of Georgia? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. I'm so excited for you. So they want you to start soon. They're, the salary, have you already discussed salary and all those other things? Yeah. So they discussed with me, well, uh, yes and no. So when I put the application in, about two days after I put the application in, um, she reached back out to me, uh, and I think she's the hiring manager. I'm not sure what where she fits in this, but anyway, um, and said, you know, the salary for this role is anticipated to be at about 140,000, depending on experience. Is that acceptable to you? And I said yes, because as you may recall, and other people may recall, so I started this year at 91. And I'm at 110 now. And I have an interview later with the CDC for a role that's also at 110. So I'm at 110 now and also remote. So it doesn't matter what I do, I can still move. And then this other role <laughs> is at 140, which is what I really want because it would allow me to basically do research all day and help people with their research, which I love. 
And Fantastic. Well, and you know, it, back to the beginning of where I started today is how many times do we have green lights in our life and we stop or we hesitate or pause or because, you know, I know that somebody might be listening to this and go, well, I, I, I could, we start making excuses why we can't get a mortgage or why we can't move, right? Or why, um, I don't know, overwhelm just it might be too much even though that's what you love so back to the one incredible thing the point of the focus and the exercise is focusing on what is in your heart that you really wanted to create and I yep. find that a lot of times we weren't willing me included willing to be honest with ourselves of what that one thing is because either we're scattered we're overwhelmed but the one thing was your value and doing what you love. You wanted to do what you love and universe kind of brought you around and showed you what that one thing was. There you go. And you put yourself first. That was the shift you've been putting yourself first. Yes. I had a conversation yesterday with my recruiter for my current role that I'm in and I I said the same thing to her. I said, you know what? I just want to go to work and do my job. I don't want all this other crap that I've just finished telling you about. Not you, but her. Yeah. You know, she said, how's your experience been? And I said, you know, I don't want any of this in my space. Right. So you're setting the boundaries. You're saying, I'm leaving that behind. I'm not going forward with that kind of nonsense. I want people that support me. And hallelujah, your husband and your father-in-law are both on board. How about that? So my husband was so excited. He was so funny because he I, I went outside because sometimes my reception down here isn't very good. So I went out upstairs and I went outside so I could talk to this woman to, you know, help clarify all, the, all of her questions that she was asking me about. And um, and she was so funny because she goes, no, I'm not trying to be nosy. I said, no, 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 I understand. It's your job to ask these questions. And frankly, it's your job to be nosy. You're the one trying to help me with this mortgage thing. I would be concerned if you weren't, you know? And so she started laughing. and. Um, so he was outside uh, with one or both of the dogs, I forget. But anyway, he was outside. So he's, he was kind of listening to part of this. And then he goes, well, he goes, this has just been a good morning. Good news all around. And I'm like, yeah, like, you know, I'll take it. <laughs> I, I, I was to your point about green lights, right? It does, it does feel a little weird when they start showing up. And so, yes. yeah, for a little while, you know, I had so many red lights for so long that when I, when I started to see the green lights, I was kind of like, what's going on? Yeah, you know, not trusting it, right? Like, right. wait a minute, it's green and there's an arrow, but the, the intersection's open, yet this man's not going. And I'm like, what's, what, why are we not moving? Let's go for it. Let's go for it. So what I, right. So what I had, what I had to do about that is I just had to go, I'm just going like, whatever it's, it's, it's a green light. And you know what, we're just going to see where this goes. And I've had to kind of talk myself down. Like, you know, I had a conversation with a friend of mine who's trying to help um, medical students with scholarly publishing, for example. And he says to me, he goes, well, all the journals require them to have a physician as their mentor on the paper, and they have to do these two papers to get their residency. And I said to him, I said, is that true? I said, is that really true? Because I've been doing a lot of scholarly publishing, granted not necessarily in, in a medic, in a quote unquote medical journal, other specialties. I said, I've been doing a lot of scholarly publishing since 2013 and I've never seen anything that says you must be a physician to publish in this journal. I said, so is that really true? You know, and I've sort of had to coach myself in that same sort of, you know, Byron Katie has that whole thing about the work and is it true, is it kind and all this. And I've sort of had to work myself on that is like, you know, okay, it's a green light, there's an arrow, there's nothing coming, the intersection is open, great you know it feels a little weird but is that really true is that weird feeling is that what I don't know I had a therapist years ago called it the boo voice that's always talking about boo and catastrophe like is that really true you it's know an old really pattern. Catastrophe or is it really green right it's a pattern right and it's something a belief system that everybody sort of just keeps repeating but it doesn't have to be and it's right and it's like I told you it kind of runs at that at that computer virus level right it's in the background and so, so, right. So, so it's like green light arrow. Is that weird feeling really true? Is that because you really can be 
I don't think so with the green light, but there really is such a thing as running towards catastrophe. That does well, happen. And, and then we're second guessing ourselves, right? After Good. so many rejections and so many closed doors and so many discombobulated situations that you face, that became a pattern that you somehow at some level decided that was truth. That was right. something about you that you're broken or you're not enough or you're not worthy or you're a difficult person to get along with. But in All reality, sorts of things, right? That weren't true, right? Remember, I told you once, right? There's three types of lies, right? Lies we tell ourselves, lies we tell other people, and lies other people tell us, right? And if you catch that, you know, then you can go, hmm. And so, so right, green light, arrow, intersection open, hmm. This feels weird, right? But then it's like it's not evaluating the light. Also, it's it's different evaluate. It's a different analysis, right? Because instead of evaluating the light. It's that weird feeling. Like, is it really, is that really true? That feeling that there's a semi truck that's going to come smash you in the intersection. Like, is that reality or is that just my brain going, eh? you know? And then, so then, so then when you look at, when I look at that, right, it's like, no, nah, that's just my brain. I'm just going to go make this turn. Right. And then it's like, okay. Um, so now I just kind of go, all right, green light, cool. You know, but it, it, it is a little bit of an adjustment also just on being able to interrupt those patterns and see those patterns. And it was really hard to interrupt them when I didn't really see them for lack of a better analogy. Like when they're so unconscious, when they're so deep, because because you're right, yeah. these are things that get very deeply, deeply ingrained very early for many people. Right. So when it was when it was so deeply ingrained, you know, like like I, I told you about how my one friend said, Oh, congratulations, you deserve it. And I was like, Yes, yes, I do. You write that pattern of I don't deserve. That's right. It's right. so cool. It's such it's a core belief within so, so many of us. Right. And, and I think for us as women, because I think that like we are socialized so differently from from men. Like I I look at not so much my brother, but I, I look at you know, the men in my life, right? And I look at their experience and how they were socialized in conversations that we have about these things, about just that issue of I deserve, right? If you just look at the I deserve belief system and how men are socialized differently from us, right? Because women are often, we're socialized, right? Put yourself last, right? How many times do you see that? This motherhood's motherhood thing where it's like, oh, your kids, your kids, your kids. If you don't take care of yourself, you're no good to your kids or anybody else. Right. But but people don't want to have that conversation. It's very uncomfortable. Well, so and you're a, you're a good it. example of learning how to put yourself first. And I think it it's sort of, you know, I watched you kind of timidly put your toes in the water. Right. You, you didn't really even know you were doing it by just taking the challenge. You went, well, this is non threatening and I'm just going to go for it and see what happens I do see you kind of cautiously just let's just throw caution to the wind but not you... gonna lie that's true that's exactly what no, I, do. I could see I, you I, I, could, I just yeah. went well you know I'm gonna try it I don't know what my one incredible thing is but I'm just gonna try it and then we had one of those meditations and I still have to listen to yesterday's replay because I, I wasn't home for it um, but there was one that we did where we went and we we're talking about what the message is about what's holding you back or something. Um, and I had gone in and I had done that one a couple of times and it was just this, like, just relax, just stop, just stop, <laughs> you know, stop. Like my friend said to me last night, right? Stop. So I was yeah, like, Bob right, Newhart right. had a great show, you know, and when, um, I forget, was it, um, Mary Hart that would come in and she'd talk about all her problems and, and he would sit in there as a psychiatrist and he goes, well, stop it. She goes, oh, but then this will happen and that will just stop it. <laughs> like, right, stop. right. So, so I kind of sat there and I said, okay, you know what? We're, we're not going to sit here and do, okay, I have to have this concrete goal. I'm not going to sit here and do any of these other things that are supposedly well, the That concrete goal may or may not have been in alignment. Right, and it wasn't right. the money you were after. You were after the experience. Right. The feeling, how do I want to feel? I want to feel supported. I want to feel uh, valued. I want to feel empowered. I want to be, you know, seen for what I've but invested you know, in myself. Right, but as you know, right, the way that most people teach that, right, is you have to have these concrete goals, and right? 
And so I was like, okay, I'm, I, all of that, like just all of that is, is gone. Like we're just leaving all of this behind and, and we're just gonna like go ahead. And I, because uh, when I took this job, you know, I left the other one because I had no growth opportunity and now I'm having all these problems over here. And I'm like, oh, I'm like, God, get me out, you know? And so I was like, all right, I'm just gonna go into this challenge and we're just gonna see. And then I saw this job that I, uh, that I was telling you about that's out of state. It's actually been posted since 2021. Like when I went and I looked Hilarious. and I started laughing. You're, you're finally like, ready for it. You're finally showing up for it is what's happened in the manifesting challenge. You're finally coming to a place of internal value, self-value. And, and there, you're, it's been there for you. Like I said, everything that you desire is already created in the universe. And what you had to do is when you were at that the long job where you were unemployed, is there was a process of you feeling worthy, like you had a string of really bad situations. Right, was then you got this job, which was a step up, and you got employed again, and you were making decent money. But, you know, yeah, some more obstacles showed, because why? You still weren't in the right place. You weren't honoring yourself. Well, so those people are so funny, too, at the former job, because they actually seem to be implementing all of the advice I had given them. So that was funny. And oh, I forgot, I was going to tell you my 50,000 a month funny story. So the, the mortgage lady, when she calls me this morning, right, so you have to put your annual income. So I put my annual income as 110,000 a year, because that's what my annual income is. So she calls me, and she goes, are you making 110,000 a month? I started laughing. I said, no, it's a year. Why? She goes, for some reason, it came over at 110,000 a month. I started laughing. <laughs> the universe, <laughs> you doubled it just like that. The universe said, hey, 50 grand a month isn't enough. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I'll take the 110 a month, but it was really funny. I was just like, oh, wow. Well, you translate that to Dubai money. It's a, a roughly about 35,000 a month. <laughs> so, you know, when I was over there, everybody was talking big numbers, but it was in Durham's. And so it was like my brain would get scrambled. And then all of a sudden I was thinking bigger numbers, <laughs> which is just great. It's funny. Well, it's funny. The mind, the mind doesn't know any difference it, and the brain, it'll make it. Well, I, I guess I'm going to make 110,000 a month yeah, now. Yeah, I'll take it. it. It's like, your next goal. Why not? Why no, not I'll, switch? I'll take it, whatever. Um, so what else was I going to tell you? Wait, about? Where's your receiving gauge? Where's your having gauge? We can just keep cranking it up. There is no limit. We live in an abundant universe. I, I didn't meditate on it yet. Because you were like, can you come on the Zoom call? So I was like, oh, I'm going to tell you about this because it was so funny. It's great. <laughs> it's awesome. Um, I love hearing about that. Yeah. And so, and when I applied for, for the job, right, I looked at it and I went, well, I was like, I'm only two years out from my doctorate, right? I had all of those things coming up for me around that. And I was like, you know what? Wayne Gretzky said, you miss a hundred percent of the shots you don't take. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to go all in on it. And the worst thing that happens is they don't respond to my application. And then two days later, she goes, oh, well, we're thinking about 140000 for the salary. Would that be acceptable to you? And I'm like, yeah. It's okay. adequate. <laughs> it's adequate. <laughs> right. Well, I guess, you know, it's not my 110 a month now that this other woman. <laughs> <laughs> well, being amused with how we hold ourselves back is, is really powerful, I think. And, you know, when the green light, when there is a green light, go for it right? You, that was your green light. You could have hesitated and not applied, but you went for it. You threw caution to the wind. You checked the intersection. There was no semi coming at you. You had right. nothing, no right. reason to. That's the thing, right? Is it true? Right. It's, it's okay. Well, yes, I'm two years out from my doctorate, but right. Is that true that that's a hindrance? No, that's not necessarily a hindrance. Right, but you have to eat. right. It's a, it's a, it's a whole, almost mind game on myself. It, it was well, it, and, and then you know we we are doing the energetic preparation. So the mind seems to be the last part that comes around. So again, with these drive-through processes that I just 
through caution to the wind, putting them out there and guiding you guys. All you have to do is show up. All you have to do is practice. All you have to do is listen a few times a week or more. You know, I, I would recommend once a day, but you know, that would be my ultimate goal for you. And then when you're doing that, the subconscious, the energetic patterns are busy in the background reshuffling. It's like you've rebooted or restarted your computer system and all the files are being rearranged. So you might just find yourself behaving or responding different. Like I'm, I don't respond like horn honking and light flashing when this person pulls in front of me anymore. Right. It's just like, okay, I get to slow down and just observe and notice when I did pass the person, of course, I notice them just clinching to the steering wheel. So it's like my, I get to respond different. I get to see this as an opportunity of talking to you and everybody else. Well, that's the thing, right? It's a different analysis. It's instead of going, you know, Oh my God, semi truck. Is this green light true? Is it, it's, is, is, it's shifting that analysis to not is the green light true, but is the semi truck really coming? You know, and if the semi truck's really coming, can I still make that green light first? And what's really going on, right? Like what's really going on in the brain type? Of thing? Well, you know, for me, I know your mind works very different, but for me, I don't need to go and into my head to trust all of that. I trust my perception. So my perceptions are off based on previous experiences. That was a pattern that I set in motion. But the other thing that I remarked about was this man had no awareness of what was behind him. Now, thank God I wasn't, you know, barreling my car down the road, um, but I had plenty of stop time, et cetera. But when we do these things in our life, there is a repercussion. There's everybody and our, when you think about the energetics of it, every decision and even thought that you have is generating an, uh, a ripple effect. And well, so yes, and he could right. have created a domino of cars behind him because he was freaked out and paused for no one, you know, there was no apparent reason, right? And so we have these kinds of situations in our life. And how are you by stopping at that light, stopping the flow of other things that want to come in? The house, right. for example, the new house and their husband with a garden and, and everybody else gets a win because you make this decision to go for it. And that's why I had to, I used to just go by my perception. I used to do that because I'm a, I'm a lot more perceptive. I'm, I'm the stupid Meyer Briggs test that I'm not really a fan of. I always come up as an INTP. Um, but what I had to do, because I would do it on previous experience too, but don't forget my previous experience was always red lights, right? So now right. I have to change that a little bit and I have to just kind of go, okay, instead of looking at the green light and going, well, is that really a green light or is that a red light in disguise type of thing? You know, it's like, what, who's trying to trick me? Like, instead of going down that pathway, I just have to go the other way and just go, okay, mind, okay, brain, you know, okay, everything around me. Um, it's sort of like, you know, I used to tell my kids, that they have to check themselves before they wreck themselves, you know, it's just an ice cube song. And I, I sort of had to do it to myself, right? And go, oh, oh yeah. I'm two years out, but you know, and then it's like, no, no, I'm two years out, but you know, this is my alma mater and you know, I, it's okay. Like the worst thing that happens is somebody says no. And if they say no, well, who cares? Like I just have had to change, right? There's no lion that's gonna come eat me if they say no. Right. Um, well, and, and, you know, I was reflecting on my move to Dubai when I, you know, the economy went to, into the tank. And I know a lot of people are freaked out about money these days and the economy and listening to the news, et cetera. And so there's no question that there there's some tough times ahead for us. But what did I do? I ended up, one of my clients said, you should come to Dubai and do your work. And I said, great, hire me somebody or find somebody that can promote me. So I took a step. I, I was willing to try it out. I went there. I did worked really hard, connected with a lot of people, made some great money, had the experience. I built a trust level that I could do this. I came home, sold the rest of whatever crap I had, bought a one-way ticket, 
and took off with a thousand bucks in my pocket. And I never had any future appointments booked. And I didn't really know how I was going to do it. I just trusted myself that I could do it. And I burned the bridge. I, you know, burned the boats. I, I went forward because what would be the worst case? I failed and went home. Or I made, made it a success. And that's how I ended up having the royal family contact me, right? And working with high level BVIP individuals. Why? Just because I trusted it. Right. Because there fear, you bet out. there was fear. I was doubting myself many, many times that I made the wrong decision. But I ended up staying for five years and had a great time, wonderful opportunities. The whole world opened up for me and I changed perceptions, my belief systems of, of the Arab world, of my experiences of different cultures, um, learning how to manage my stress level in different ways. Okay, even food I ate, I opened up the whole space to explore another aspect to myself. Yeah. And so when we hit those, make those green lights, red lights, you know, we're stopping such a world of opportunities and experiences that we have no way of knowing by you taking a chance with your going for this job, who knows where this is going to open up and lead you? Well, so far. That you can't even <laughs> imagine what that incredible thing is yet because the universe is setting you up. <laughs> For the next level of incredible thing. Sorry, it's leading me down this path. Yeah, it's exciting. Uh, you know. Yeah. And I'm trying not to be a control freak and I'm trying to just kind of go. Okay, staying you know. grounded. You're the number one tool. Staying grounded. Ground your job. Ground the presentation. Ground your head, your anal over analytical self, you know ground that extra energy because all of this is sort of building excitement right which is a good thing it's a good vibe but at the same time we want to still be present so right. this is that's great practice and and but we, we don't have, want to go off the rails with exactly it. <laughs> you'll, you'll be derailed in another way right it's just like because good things can do that and good things happening in your life can make you sick and good things in your life can cause other disturbances that maybe you're not ready to handle. So that's why we want to be grounded, present, and for, you know, have the mind to, uh, and the emotional level to manage it, to navigate it. Yeah. We'll be, we'll be done with our challenge by the time I'm out for the interview, but I will let you know where well, that leads. You're always welcome to reach out to me and leave comments on these videos or on our, on a private group page you know um the art of making miracles i'm always around and so you know the challenge is i really think it continues till the end of september because we started at the end of july then we practiced all of august then we had another week in august practiced all of september so september these these recordings you can practice till the end of september right oh sure so it's just that it's next um it's next month. So I'll still be continuing those. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Keep, keep the practice up. going. Yeah. But my my life calls here, um, you know, I might open it up for once a week or something like that. So it or once every two weeks so that we can come in and share and ask questions so that, you know, I keep we can keep the momentum. But certainly the private Facebook group, you can, you know, be active there. I I encourage that. That's not going away. Well, and Rebecca, keep you informed. It seems to me your next step is in order <laughs> that you're avoiding. I don't know what that is, but yeah, I'm you sure do. Yeah, that's you do. Itself. Yeah, you do. There's a bigger game for you, but uh, I know you're partly stepping into it. Well, it's not consciously aware, but I have to go because I have to do a couple yeah, things too. before I got to jump awesome. to the next meeting. Hey, thank you so much for coming. And here's cheers to you. Thank here's you. The cheers. Yeah, I think it's fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing all your good news and your your perfect examples of stepping up, stepping up the power, stepping all into right. the power. I'll see you later. Okay, take care. All the best. You too. Bye.